It has allowed them to feel comfortable performing and to feel that they can still do what they love. When the pandemic hit, many musicians were forced to take their work home. For an industry that needs both an audience and close collaboration, this was particularly hard. Many lost their livelihoods. So when Melly Willis from the Minnesota Orchestra decided to find a safe way to bring her musicians back onto stage, she called upon the study of fluid dynamics for some answers. Here we are, a symphony orchestra, and we have, by nature, lots of people on stage together making music, um, and some of them by using instruments that they play by breathing and blowing through them. And suddenly that gave us pause and we wanted to have some real solid, scientific, medically based information to move forward with. We were very much wanting to determine what it was that we could do safely, and we really didn't know. Associate Professor Jerong Hong at Minnesota University is a specialist in computational fluid dynamics. He's fascinated by the behaviour of tiny airborne particles that are now thought to be one of the key ways that COVID-19 spreads. Those particles are very, very small. They can carry viruses and they can suspend it in the air for a very long period of time. So in this kind of situation, this six feet social distancing doesn't really apply because it usually applies to when people coughing and sneezing. So there's a spacing, but the particles are moving around for 20, 30 minutes. Their motion is governed by the, how the flow moves inside different indoor spaces. Professor Hong has completed a range of studies simulating the way that these aerosol particles behave in different indoor spaces. When people play wind instruments, they put a lot of air into the instruments. So uh, accordingly, they're likely to put a lot of aerosol particles if the person is infected, and they're likely to generate a lot of respiratory droplets that contain the viruses. He was excited by the challenge of working in an orchestra hall with its unique set of interior fluid dynamics. The data that was um, allowing scientists and medical professionals to recommend the six-foot physical distancing was from speaking or breathing. We didn't know how playing an instrument was going to affect that, if it was going to be the situation where perhaps those aerosols were transported further than we thought. Professor Hong wanted to see if he could collect data that might allow musicians to practice in safety. We have the particle counters. We can count how many particles are coming out uh, from those instruments per unit time. The study started with measuring aerosol concentration from different musical instruments in a lab setting. For airborne transmission, it is very important to look at what is the ventilation or flow settings in the real, you know, practical scenario. The scientists then came into the concert hall to take readings there. We apply an optical technique that allows us to directly see the flow coming out from different uh, optical instruments. We also conducted aerosol particle measurements, so we can measure during that time how many particles are emitted. Yeah, I'll let you know when, when the 60 seconds are over. We can also measure the change of particle concentration at different distances away from the instrument. So this allows us to estimate the spreading of aerosols in that particular indoor spaces. The natural convection caused by the difference in air temperature and body temperature actually also contributed to the fact that the aerosols did not flow directionally from the instrument. Rather, they were actually transported up, away from the players. The aerosol particles is being carried at the flow as it moves out of the instrument uh, for about 20 to 30 centimeters away from the instrument. They get start, they started rising up caused by this thermal plume effect. In the large performance space, the difference between the ambient air and body heat creates a thermal plume which carries particles upwards away from the performers. 
Did the airflow patterns from the different wind instruments vary? For the brass instruments, and it seems that the, the aerosol generation is more correlated with the, the duration of the play, uh, note. For these woodwind instruments, the aerosol generation is more correlated to the change of the pitch. This is because they're different the playing style and different engagement of their vocal cords in playing different kinds of instruments. The researchers categorized the instruments into three risk categories. The tuba was characterized as low risk because it produced fewer aerosols compared to an average person's exhalation. The bassoon, piccolo, flute, bass clarinet and French horn produce aerosol concentrations in the range of normal breathing. The clarinet, bass trombone and oboe produce concentrations on or just above the range of speaking and the trumpet produces a significantly higher number of aerosols than all other instruments. This information has allowed the orchestra to plan concerts where the higher risk instruments are in smaller groups and appropriately spaced. Professor Hong also tested how instrument masks could prevent a buildup of potentially infectious aerosols. When you put on one layer of mask, you can cut down roughly about 60% of aerosol generation. Whenever you're ready. You don't feel that there's a big difference when you put just simple, a single layer of mask. But when you start putting more layers of mask and you cut down more aerosols, you change that from, let's say, 6% to 70% or 90% by putting two layers or three layers of masks, but it becomes harder and harder to play. From the results, several measures were recommended, including lowering the temperature of the room, increasing the difference between human bodies and the ambient air, which creates a stronger upward thermal plume. The scientists were also able to advise the orchestra to place HEPA filters, which remove aerosols above the high-risk instruments. Distance between musicians is still important and, where possible, face and instrument masks were recommended. So what we measure is after 30 centimetres, the concentration of aerosol is very low. It does not mean that, you know, there's, when you stay 30 centimetres apart, the musician is going to be perfectly safe. When you have people spaced apart, that's certainly going to help. Like, but probably not as effective as you locally extract those aerosol particles from the highest risk instruments. The results helped the Minnesota Orchestra return to stage for a series of live streamed performances. We have used the results of the research to inform how we set up our stages, um, how we have our musicians interact with each other. I think it has allowed them to feel comfortable performing um, and to feel that they can still do what they love. So much science in that story. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell button below for notifications.